Through the concrete cracks worn weary by work boots and high heels. Through the concrete cracks showered in tears of sorrow, tears of joy. Through the concrete cracks rumbled by reverberations of a hundred years. A flower on the hill takes its first breath and a grand hope springs. Welcome to the Spring Street Podcast at the intersection of creation and destruction in the heart of downtown Los Angeles. And now, a word from the sponsors. This podcast is sponsored by Starship Kairos, a podcast studio available for bookings in downtown Los Angeles. Starship Kairos is where my guests and I make this show happen. Soundproofed, cozy, and equipped with professional audio gear, Starship Kairos is an ideal location for any type of podcast. Starship Kairos offers a full suite of services, including content consultation, mixing and mastering, and custom jingle writing. For rates and booking, check them out on Instagram at Starship Kairos or click on the link in the description. And now, let's dive in. We're live. We're going. We're rolling. Welcome to the Spring Street Podcast, Christina. Thank you very much. Downtown Los Angeles. Love it. <laughs> uh, I'm super happy to have you on the show. I, It's kind of random how this all came about. I was just going on a walk in the neighborhood, and I walked past... <laughs> Your brewery, High Def Brewing, I looked in, I was like, oh, I've never seen this place before. It looks cool. I should just walk, walk in, in and <laughs> check it out. And it's a really awesome space. Uh, it's really cool because you can see the actual like big brewery oh, machinery. The beer is and made right there. Yeah. You can see the process. I love that. And then you were super friendly. And, um, <laughs> Thank you. you know, then I came back, had some drinks, had some really good beer at your place. I really like what you guys are doing, and now we're here. So awesome. I'm really curious about the story, how you and your husband, because you guys own it together, it's like a... It's the three of us. Oh, that there's one more person? There is one more person. Okay. So my husband loves beer, <laughs> loves beer, yeah. uh, but also loves the craft of mm. beer and the passion that goes into making good beer. Yeah. So when he was 40... Somebody gave him as a birthday present a homebrew kit. Okay. So he started making beer. Yeah. And then, and then my bathtub was full of <laughs> <laughs> kegs. And then it grew. And then my patio. And then my garage. And he really wanted a brewery and really wanted a brewery. And it was his passion and it was his dream. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a sound engineer. Yeah. So everything in his life is high definition. Mm-hmm. So he wanted the brewery to be called High Def. Yeah. High Definition. Um, to make high definition beer. <laughs> I like um, it. and I told him, I'm like, we can't do this because being a home brewer is great, but being an industrial, <laughs> like a big machine, is a completely different thing. Right. So then he said, Okay, we'll get the best brewer that is out there and we'll give him partnership. Mm-hmm. We'll give him ownership. Um, so he only wanted to do this project with a very particular person. Uh, okay. And that's Larry Lars um, Lesterud, and he is the best brewer that, you know, yeah. that we wanted. And he jumped on board, and wow. it's, it's our dream. Wow. How well, long? no, it's my husband's <laughs> dream. <laughs> no, no, go back. It's my husband's dream. Um, yeah. but, but, you know, it's, I really wanted to be there through the process. Yeah. Wow. How long did it take to find a brewer? Um that was that was easier than finding a place. Oh, really? Wow. Yes, because it, it was timing Larry lived in Humboldt County mm-hmm. all his life, I mean not all his life, but all his adult life, and he just moved back to LA to take care of his mother. Oh, so wow. it was very like he happened to move back. He was jumping between breweries, and we kind of started. Th- that was a more, I think, more serendipity mm-hmm. finding a place uh, because we live in Glendale, so we okay. really, really wanted to open in Glendale. Interesting. Downtown was cheaper than Glendale. I believe it. <laughs> There's some good deals here downtown. <laughs> yes. So downtown LA was cheaper than Glendale. Downtown and, is desperate for some business. And so we just didn't know how long it was going to take to open a business in downtown. Yeah, so, so walk me through that process. So Glendale said, if you open here three months, you're, you're ready. 
will make sure the permits mm. go through in three months. Mm. It took two and a half years in downtown LA. Wow. Two and a half years of paying rent in downtown LA without being able to open a business. No way. So that is the part that I did not like about downtown. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> so I'm sure, you know, we did something that was wrong or whatever. So let's mm-hmm. say a year was my fault, but at, at least a year and a half was not my fault. Yeah. So, so that's, that's a long time. <laughs> that was to, a long time. That was not be making money. <laughs> that was a very long time. So Wow. So to be ready to open, to get the permit on COVID. Mm-hmm. So we got the final permit on June 2020, so we couldn't open because it was COVID. Oh my goodness. So, but you know, this story repeats all over Los Angeles. It's yeah. just not us, everybody had some bad luck. We- yeah, so you had already started looking for a location before COVID? Yeah, yes, so we opened, okay. I mean, we started paying rent in 2019, so it was, Oh. yeah. I mean, sorry, oh, 2018, man. 2018, so it was two years. Yeah. And then we finally get the CUP mm-hmm. June 2020. Yeah. So we couldn't open because it was the big shutdown. Mm-hmm. They finally let us open October 2020. Yeah. We made beer. We were all excited. We were finally <laughs> going to open. We made beer. We were ready. Yeah. We were open for three weeks and then the big shutdown happened again. Yeah. So February 2021 is when we officially wow. reopened. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's so interesting because I moved to downtown in 2019. Oh. And at that time, downtown was really cool. There was a lot of things happening, a lot of energy, a lot of really cool spots. So it seems like you guys were part of that movement. Yes. Everybody was, things were happening downtown. Yes. So... And COVID they- definitely <laughs> took the wind out of those sails. But I think it's coming back though. I'm seeing a lot of places pop up downtown. Somebody told me, look, downtown is the first one to go. Like when COVID hit, it was mm-hmm. the first thing to like just go down, right? Yeah. It's always the last to come back. Hmm. But when it comes back, it's going to come back roaring. Yeah. So I'm holding on to that. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, downtown is the only place that I can think of in L.A., that still feels like a walkable city where you could come to downtown, you could take the train, you could park, and then you could walk all over the city. You don't have to take an Uber. Agreed. You don't have to. It feels like a normal city. Agreed. Are Angelinos ready to walk? (laughs) That's the question I have. That's a good question. Yeah. I'm not from L.A. originally. And that's and I know why you're you not love walking. From LA originally. Are Angelinos willing to not get in the car? Yeah. It's funny because for me, I hate the driving, the- parking culture. I just want to post some, like, I want to put my car somewhere and then walk the rest of the day. Yes. Not think about it. Yes. So you're from Spain originally, right? I'm from Spain. What part I'm, of Spain? I'm from the Northwest. So I'm three hours north from Madrid. Okay. Um, and I didn't know how to drive until I moved here when I was 24. Wow. So I never owned a car or didn't need one car. Yeah. So amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so my goal is to move to downtown. You know, once we have a yeah. daughter, so once my daughter hopefully goes to college, we can move to downtown and I can mm-hmm. finally live on an apartment. Yeah. And walk and get my groceries and just be in a city again. Yeah. So that's part of the plan. Wow. What brought you to America? Um stupidity at the <laughs> beginning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I mean in when you're from Europe Getting a degree in the U.S. is very valuable. Mm. So I came here to get my master's and then I was going to go back. But then I met my husband. Ah. And now I have a brewery. (laughs) (laughs) What was your master's in? MBA, my master in business administration. Okay. No, that is... No, that it's... I cannot tell you, oh my God, um, I'm the best businesswoman because obviously I'm not. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, I'm sure that doesn't hurt having an MBA in when you're running a, a small business downtown LA. It doesn't hurt. But as I said, COVID was not on my business plan. Like I have um, a beautiful business plan mm-hmm. and it just, COVID wasn't there. So now we have to adapt it every day after. <laughs> yeah. I don't think a global pandemic was part of anybody's, anybody's business, business plan. plan. I'm sure, I don't know. Yeah, I was working in the restaurant industry oh, through really? COVID. Yeah, I was a bartender before COVID. 
like <laughs> leading right up to COVID, March. What was the day that like the world ended? March 18th or March, something like that? March 16th because we couldn't go out for St. Patrick's. Yeah, that's right. We that's, couldn't. So I got a funny story about this. So I was a bartender at a couple different bars. Okay. In downtown? Um, not downtown. One was in at USC. One was in Beverly Hills. Oh. Lost my jobs instantly. And I didn't know what I was going to do. And then somebody told me, hey, there's this bar restaurant in the arts district and for people who work in the service industry who've been laid off they're giving like sandwiches they're giving oh, like, okay meals today so i was like oh my goodness amazing like food yeah, yeah. <laughs> so me my friend i think she was also a bartender i don't know me and a couple other people we went to this place and they had all their saint patrick's decorations up at this bar because they were they getting were ready and there was no saint patrick's that year yeah, that's um, the day. I wish I remembered the name of that place because they deserve a shout out. That was really awesome. And it was in the arts district. Do it was know? somewhere in the arts district. Okay. Yeah, I bet you I could find it. You yeah, should. But, but it might not even be there anymore. So I many restaurants, you know, could, didn't make it. How are you going to make it? I mean, it's... So I'm curious, how did you guys make it? Well, we make it because... My working capital that I had saved went into wow that so that's what that's what we never took off after mm -hmm. because we don't have any more money to the marketing the advertising right. the whatever it takes like yeah. I really want to find a van now so that's my next step but we just don't have the working capital because it was all gone just used to to keep the thing to keep the thing going wow because at, at how are we gonna after two and a half years, mm -hmm. how are we gonna not open, right? Like we ha we wanted a shot at this. We right. really wanted to to try it. Yeah. So we kept going. Um, landlord let us pay only half rent for six months, but then wow. we had to pay him back. Right. So it's like landlord never lost, you know. But yeah. I can't complain. I can't complain. Yeah. Like at least for those six months, it was half rent. Yeah. But well, honestly, the fact that you guys are still alive, <laughs> still around, is a huge accomplishment because so many places didn't make it. And it's a beautiful space, and you guys have delicious beer. And so <laughs> at the end of the day, that's the most important thing. I mean, that's, that's what my husband says. My husband says, cream always raises to the top. Yeah. Just don't know how long it takes for the cream to rise to the top. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So but. tell me a little bit about the beers that you guys have. Um, so the brewer, who is the one that they say deserves all the credit, because mm -hmm. he is the one that is making everything happen. And what is his name again? Lars. Lars. Lars okay. Lesterud. So he um, he brews all all sorts of beers, like Blondel, Stout, um, IPAs, you name it, and he brews them very, very good, mm -hmm. every style. And there is a particular beer. A barley wine beer that is fifteen percent alcohol. <laughs> That's pretty <really> heavy. <laughs> so that one just won the California Brewers Cup. That's amazing. So I think that I think that has been like something we really needed to yeah. just confirm that okay, this is what we wanted to do. Yeah. Yeah. So we just That's have to awesome. keep going. <laughs> what is your favorite beer that you guys make? I love my sours. Yeah, I, I love sour beers too. I, I really, really do. So, but um, we make an amber lager. It's called Clifford, like the big mm -hmm. red dog. Okay, yeah, uh, <laughs> because it's red, yeah. and I really enjoy that one too. But mm -hmm. our type of license only allow us to sell the beer that we make. So I cannot sell wine right. or any other alcohol. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of people that want to drink wine, and we do have a sour that has been um, on the barrels on French wine barrels for mm -hmm. a year. So that wow. is my wine taste that I, you know, that I really like too. Yeah. But I offer to the people that don't like beer. That's cool. Yeah. That's really cool. And then are you guys allowed to sell food at all? We are. We have to do food trucks because we don't have a kitchen. Right. So we do food trucks or people order from local restaurants. Oh, and and they, they, bring, they bring the food over. So that's cool. Pine and Crane is next to ours. Um, first Draft, who I think don't know if they're going to reopen or not, but mm -hmm. th th we have enough restaurants around, Pizza Social, that people can bring their own food. That's cool. Yeah. Um, one thing I was curious about is the process of getting, like, all those permits and the licenses. 
that can be so intimidating, you know. A lot of people have this idea of like, I want to open a restaurant or a brewery or a business, and then there's all these steps. I somebody recommended to pay an expediter. Okay. And we did. Mm-hmm. And I think that without him, we couldn't even have done it. Wow. So that person is essentially the expert. They know the exactly where to go. between us and the city, right? Got but it. I feel it sh- you shouldn't have to pay somebody to do this. Right. Um, so I think that's something that the city of LA should somehow facilitate mm-hmm. facilitate a little bit more. Yeah. Um, with an expediter. It was two and a half years, so I don't even want to <laughs> think what it was with that one. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> yes. Um, so the city of LA, the the ABC license, which is the alcohol license, was mm-hmm. not as hard. The federal um, alcohol license was not as hard. Mm. The CUP, because the space that we had before, the space that we rent, um, it used to be, they used to make the clothing for Dancing with the Stars. Oh, no way. So we had to do a change of use. So from uh-huh. from that, from a fashion place to a brewery. Yeah. So I think that's what, but if you already get a restaurant, I think it'd be easier. Yeah, something that's already zoned so, for that. So this was a change of use, and I think. And then when the inspectors came, we had to retrofit it for mm-hmm. earthquakes. And that oh, was not on my business plan either. Oh, yeah. Wow. And the landlord didn't help with that. That's crazy. Yeah. So Interesting. That was, that was, you know, like you have a plan, but then these things happen. Right. <laughs> yeah. What do you look for or what did you look for in a space? What were your, some of the like the boxes that need to be checked off? I, it, it, that was more um, Trevor, my husband and mm. Lars. Um, they, you know, in terms of where the brew house had to be and how it all had to be connected. So I think mm. they they can answer that question better than I can. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to make sure that it looked inviting yeah. to people and like and the warehouse looks that it has. Yeah. So everybody that walks in really likes the space. Yeah, it's it's beautiful. And you guys have artwork in there too, which is really cool. And... Yeah. So another thing, the COVID one of the art galleries, um, they lost their warehouse because of COVID. Wow. So, and we had empty walls. So we yeah. told them, come on over. Yeah. My walls look beautiful now and the art sells and he changes the art all the time. So Wow. That's really cool. So that's a win-win for both. <laughs> yeah. And I love that just community collaborative effort. effort. I think it's the only way to make it nowadays. Yeah. Community. Yeah. If the community doesn't support you. Yeah. Yeah. When you're in an interesting area talking about community, because you guys are in South Park. South Park. Which is kind of the residential part of downtown LA. The new up and coming residential area. How do you know about South Park? (laughs) Um, that's a good question. I think I just Uh know about South Park from living downtown. Um eventually I started just, you know. Exploring, exploring and wandering and ended up in South Park and realized, wow, this is really nice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is a lot nicer than 7th and Spring. And Spring. So I feel that nobody knows that South Park exists. Mm. Like you say downtown and everybody's, oh, fashion district, financial right, yeah. district. But the word South Park, like it's not out there yet. You know what that is? That I think that is true because... I feel like I'm the only one who ever says South Park. <laughs> right. I feel like people I talk to, they never tell me, they don't say those words to me. I'm the one who's like, oh, this area, South, South Park, Park, super cool. So I think we need to make an effort to put South Park on the map. Interesting. Yeah, it would be cool for there to be more community organized events, like a South Park festival or South Park weekends yes. or like South Park summer. Or whatever. So it's yeah. happening more now. There is an association uh, okay. uh, other than the, than the South Park bid. There is the South Park um, Neighborhood Association and they're putting events together there. Mm-hmm. So I think little by little it will take off. Yeah. Right? But right yeah. now... Well, if you're listening, check out South Park. Yes. <laughs> Good prices on uh, apartments, I think. I don't think they're that expensive. I don't know, but they say that they have 95% occupancy, so... Really? That's what that's what the managers claim, so... Huh. 
That's interesting. Well, there's a lot of buildings that are being built mm-hmm. in South Park. A lot of development that's happening. Yeah. So there's going to be more room. There's also those uncompleted Projects. towers <laughs> that are just standing there. I didn't know that they were uncomplete until somebody told me that there's like a big scandal. There's a bi- big scandal with, with in everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And of course, the big scandal would be downtown LA. <laughs> so, of course. Uh, one random question I have for you: Whose motorcycle? Is, oh, is so that there? is Lars. That's the that's his, okay. Yes, yes. Yeah, I see that bike whenever I go, and I'm like, "That's a sweet bike." It is. He lives in West Hollywood, and it was stolen. No. So he has to replace a lot of things. So in the meantime, he's there, but we love the look <laughs> of the of the brewery and the bike, so like the you, brew house and the bike. Did you see the motorcycles in here when yes, you walked I did. in? <laughs> okay, so one of those is mine. Oh. And it was also stolen. And there's a bunch of things that I need to fix on it, which really? is why it's sitting. <laughs> in there. Okay. Okay. Same thing. Same thing. Yeah. Yes. It's uh, motorcycles get stolen in LA. It happens. A lot of things get stolen. <laughs> I had a bicycle stolen. My well, pallets I, get stolen. Your pallets? My pallets get stolen. Really? Yes. Everything that I leave outside. My my trash can gets stolen. My my bin. <laughs> That's so wild. So it's $75 every time somebody steals my trash can. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's interesting. That's so let's let's talk about this. Let's get into the nitty gritty. The challenges in downtown of downtown LA. You know, you're a small business owner which, you know, it's it's a bold move. It's a bra- it's a courageous move. What are some of those challenges? Um, it does drive me crazy that anything that I leave outside gets stolen. Yeah. That, um, it's something that you're not used to, I think, in the rest, because I leave my I trash can outside in Glendale and, they, <laughs> and they're there. Yeah. <laughs> Here they get stolen. Yeah. Um, homeless, homeless. I mean, everybody's talking about homeless, but it is a big problem in LA. I mean, I don't want to. Yeah. It is. Get political or not, but um, the other day, one homeless walked into the bar and we had four people from BID, our own secu- I mean security from BID, mm-hmm. there trying to get him out. But you cannot touch um, right. a person, which is completely fine, but he wouldn't leave. So it was 45 minutes hmm. um, on the call one with 911 trying to get him out. Wow. That is not the norm. Normally, I don't have issues, or mm-hmm. if I have issues, Bid gets there. And but it was uncomfortable yeah. for my patrons. Who? What is Bid? Oh, Bid is the business industrial development. Um, so oh. every district in South Park has their own Bid. So there oh, is fashion district Bid, um, financial district Bid, and we have South Park Bid. Okay, which are amazing. Are those the guys on the bike? On the green, yes. Oh, and they have the green shirts. Yes. Okay. Cool. Yes, and they're amazing. Amazing. You call them, they're there, they're super helpful. Yeah. They're I feel safe because they're there. That's good. Yes. That's amazing. I yes. Uh but we do have homeless walking in, which is something that is downtown. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a really tricky element. Um I used to be the night manager at Joey DTLA. Oh. On Seventh and Hope. And we would have all sorts of crazy stuff. And how do you deal with that? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's a good question. Um, various ways. I mean, <laughs> sometimes you would call the police. Sometimes, but the police doesn't come unless, like, you said. Well, we had some crazy stuff happen. Oh, okay, okay. So if the police came, yes. <laughs> yeah. <crazy. laughs> sometimes you just don't even have an opportunity to call the police because it just gets so intense so fast. Oh my god! There was one time this guy came up. He came right up to me. This dude has no shirt on, and he's just like mad dogging me. He looks like he wants to fight me. He's like right up in my grill, just going off. And in that situation, it's like the only thing that we could do was the other, the person, this was when I first started, like one of my first weeks. Welcome. (laughs) Yeah. And uh, the guy who's the bar manager, he, he got like right up against this guy. And then a bunch of the other dudes working just like, you know, and it was like intimidation. It was like, all right. 
you're intimidating us. We have to. We're going to show you that you're not going to be able to do much. But there was like no other, there's no time. And luckily the guy just went away. Yes, that's what I'm saying. You know? Most of the time is luck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I had another situation where a woman, she came into the restaurant and she was just out of her mind. I think she was schizophrenic and she was oh. talking about all sorts of crazy things. She said that she was being chased and there was a loan shark and Aww. a hammer and all these different things. But she like she you could just put it. Yeah. yeah. And so in that particular situation, I just talked to her and I kind of tried to just like play into her story, you know, like, okay, the coast, the coast is clear. I can, I can tell like, you're good to go, you know, like, just go. <laughs> and then, and then she was okay. Like, and then she went, she um, but then other times it's, you know, the times you do have to call the police or, you know, there's one time where a whole, <laughs> did you have your own security there or no? So we did, we did okay. have our own security. It was pretty crazy. They had to pay to have security for the entire duration of their hours. Oh, wow. Morning to night, seven days a week. Oh, wow. They paid a lot of money for security every single day. Wow. And even then, it's, it's, it's only so much. That, yes, that's so. what you can do. Yes. Do you wow. guys have security? We don't. Um, we use BIT. When, okay, yeah. Um, but... So far, no issues. That's um, good. We like if I have a big event and I know it's gonna be bigger than I normally can handle. Mm -hmm. I do bring security that day, so I yeah. just do it by events if needed. Yeah. Do but you guys have not, a lot of events that like people booking the space or? We do, but it's That's cool. it's mainly like um, let's say birthday parties or things like that, where it's mm -hmm. like a group of fifty. Where I, yeah. I don't need security for that. Yeah. So that's helping a lot. Yeah. Events, but because we don't charge for the space, it's, it's just the beers that you drink. Oh, cool. And we have like an area that you can, I mean, it's not private by any means, but mm -hmm. that you can put your group there. Mm -hmm. So it helps. Yeah. <laughs> and then I, you guys have a little DJ booth. So, Set yeah. Up. So, when do you guys do your live music? What nights of the week? Is, is or not live music, but the DJ the music. The DJ <laughs> is every other Thursday. And then there is a live artist that comes those nights. And oh, they do cool. live painting with the DJ. That's really cool. Every other Thursday. You told me that you guys don't have a license for live music, right? I just got, oh, uh, got the it. city of LA to sign on my zoning. I'm now taking all the application to the police department. Okay. So, so you'll keep be able your to fingers do crossed. Live music. <laughs> yes, that would be a life changer. Oh, that would be really cool. I think so. So I, I just have to wait for the police department. They have to yeah. come and inspect, and we have to go through the background check. And Wow, that's crazy. That's such a process. Uh, Yes, but if we go through it, <laughs> yeah, then you're good because, to go. Yes, because the last council member didn't give us the permit because mm -hmm. he wanted us to show that we were good neighbors. Huh. So now that we've been open for two full years, and yeah. that we are good neighbors, we're good people, <laughs> yeah. then we, I can apply for it. So yeah. City of LA cleared me for that. That's cool. So All these permits excited. and licenses, it's, I don't know how you do it. It's... You just do it because that's the only thing you can do. That's the only <laughs> to, thing, yeah. To keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Before you and your husband had the brewery, yes. what were you guys doing? Okay. So my husband worked for Dolby. Oh, wow. Dolby Sound. Super cool. For 22 years. Wow. And he got laid off with the pandemic. No way. So it was it was that. And then I, I was home taking care of my daughter. Um, so then all of a sudden we had a brewery and no income. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no income coming from anywhere. Yeah. Um, now he's working for Disney. Oh, cool. Yes. So he's a sound engineer at Disney. So I'm wow. just doing the brewery and he's working for Disney. Is he also a musician? Yes. Ah. How do you know? I mean, he's a sound engineer. I'm just taking okay. I feel like <laughs> if you're a sound engineer, engineer you have, yes. the chances that you're a musician is pretty high. Yes. I, I would be curious to see what he would think of this setup. <laughs> <laughs> I. Can bring him over. <laughs> yeah, know. maybe I'll have to bring him on the podcast next. Yes. That would that'd be really cool. So, yes, it was... You know how they say they always hit three times? Like, you, when you get hit, it's like three times. It's COVID, you lose your job. Oh, And then I had yeah. some health issues. and But now it's all good. 
Yeah, it is funny. I do feel like I've had days where like, you know, you'll have a bad day and it feels like one thing. And then the next thing you're like, oh, there's going to be yeah, another one is coming. Be one more. <laughs> so at least I'm going to I'm going to get ready. Oh, man. Yes. And that's how life is. Like sometimes everything is great. And then sometimes everything is just awful. Yeah. Awful. And yet we keep going. Yeah. So what do you do now? You're not in the. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. And, you know, I'm not technically in the industry anymore. Okay. I'm not, you know, bar I'm not bartending. I'm not cooking. I'm not serving. I'm not running restaurants. But I would like to think that in a way I'm still part of the industry okay. through this podcast, bringing on chefs, okay. bringing on, you know, business owners or bartenders or servers or brewers, okay. um, restaurant owners. I do love that industry, though, because it's it's. It's been part of my journey. I mean, I I was in the in, I worked in the industry. I started when I was 15. Oh wow! And or 15, I think 15. I think I got my first serving job when I was 15. Okay. <laughs> wow. And I'm I, sure you miss it then. I there are there's definitely elements that I miss for sure. And I want to have my own restaurants and okay bars and venues and clubs and coffee shops and all those things one day. Okay. Um. But for now, I am enjoying this. Just being okay. able to invite people on and and learn their stories and allow them to share their experiences. Um, yeah, maybe in a way I'm like trying to download all this information to um. take notes for <laughs> my my future endeavors. Get an expediter. <laughs> that's, I would be your expediter next. Okay, time. <laughs> that sounds good. That sounds good. Do you guys, uh, in terms of your business model? Are you guys canning your beers on site and then distributing them various places? What's that element of the operation like? I really want to distribute my beer everywhere in downtown LA. Mm -hmm. Like I would love to make my beer part of downtown LA. Yeah. Um, so we're doing kegs. Um, you can find our beer at Broadway Bar. You can find Sweet. our... Yes. Yeah, so there, there are places that you can find our beer at the Yard House. Um, mm. Canning, we don't have a canning line yet. Okay. That's part of the working capital that went away <laughs> during yeah. the COVID. So we're canning one by one, which is still doable. And we do serve cans to the Ace Hotel. Wow. Um, so we can do it. It's just harder. So draft is working better for us than mm -hmm. cans are. But you can definitely grab a four pack um, at the brewery. Mm -hmm. and so you have the home. ability to just. You, you have that machine. That I have the machine, but it's just one by one. So wow. it's a lot of labor. <laughs> yeah. Was part of the business plan to be doing like an in, like industrial level canning yes. at the same location? Yes. And oh, wow. We can get there are mobile canning people, so we can do that. I just hmm. don't have, I don't have a salesperson yet, so I don't have uh, where to put the cans. Yeah. And my cold room space is very limited. Yeah. So that's another thing that I need to find, more cold room space. Interesting. It's uh, funny. These cans that we're drinking right now, this uh, nitro coffee from B Sweet. Shout out to B Sweet. Uh -huh. I actually once, I'm really good friends with um, with Chef Barb, who's the one who's like the mm. um, the owner of okay. this with her partner, Kurt. Um, How do they do it? So I actually worked at their canning plant one day. It was just a really random thing. They needed some extra help. And oh. Oh. Their director of operations hit me up. Hey, do you want to come? <laughs> you and a buddy. And this was at a different canning place. They have a, a, a new one now. But I actually spent a day at some pl I don't even know where I was. I was really far away. And it was this big warehouse, big operation. They were canning all sorts of like different things. Oh. And they also did ciders and stuff. But yeah, I spent a day working in this location that helping them. <laughs> Working in the cannery. <laughs> that is fantastic. It was cool just to yeah. see it, just to see what that actually looked like looks behind like. the scenes. Yes. Um, and now I think they have something that's like way more sophisticated. sophisticated and then <laughs> for sure. I mean, the starts are always hard. Yeah. So. Yeah. We're... But it's such a cool process. I mean, one day you guys will have your cans distributed all over the place over the and they'll place. be in Whole Foods and they'll be at, you know, I hope, I also, hope. And but that's that. That's gonna be a really cool feeling for you guys. I hope so. I I need that. I need that extra push to get me through that. To be like, okay, 
we can do this. Yeah. But in terms of design, who's the the eye behind the design? Do you guys have a graphic designer or no? Is it... Yet we 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 need one. Mm -hmm. So it's, so far it's Trevor. Like so far we do everything. Like Lars is the beer. Trevor mm -hmm. is more like the design, and I'm like everything else. Yeah. <laughs> Trying, um, but we definitely need more people. We just cannot afford it yet. But we yeah. we'll get there. Yeah. Like we just. I feel that we need way more marketing, but that's money. Everything is money. Yep. We don't have it. So <laughs> with my few resources, we do as best as we can. Yeah. We're doing all the beer festivals. Um, mm. So How does that work? Do you, like, apply? Do you have to pay to be in a beer festival? What is that? It okay. depends. Like, there are, um, like, the L.A. Brewers Guild. So all of the breweries in L.A. are part of a guild. Okay. Um, so we are all a big organization and we meet once a month and, what, wow. and we see what we can do for the industry. And That's really cool. Yes. Oh, it, the brewery community is the best community. That if you, you guys have a find. plus one, bring me along. I'd love to okay. <laughs> see the, what that the, would the look like. The brewery community is the best. Yeah. It is the best. Everybody tries to help everybody. Like I am borrowing a machine for the bottling from another brewery. Wow, like, no way. Yes. I mean, they're fantastic. That's cool. Um, so they have... It's going to be LA Independent Beer Fest on June 10th. Okay. So it's going to be 75 breweries from LA being there. Wow. Yes. Where's Th that going to be? That's going to be in Long Beach. Cool. But the one, the LA Beer Fest, is here in downtown LA. Mm -hmm. And then they do one at Brucology at the California Science Center. Okay. So you're there at the Science Center drinking beer. Sweet. There's one at the zoo. Yeah. So there's a lot of beer festivals. And that's, that's cool. I think that brings a lot of. Um, people to get to know your product yeah yeah you know it's interesting when i first moved to la um i i felt like la wasn't and i felt like it didn't really have much of a good like craft beer scene probably because it didn't yeah <laughs> because how long ago did you move here i moved here almost five years ago oh no they already had it okay well but i moved here from the pacific northwest that's true vancouver that's true portland which is like the the capital, the mecca the of capital. craft beer. Yes. But, you know, the longer I've been here, the more breweries that I've discovered. I think also the more breweries that have popped up. Yes. And it's really cool to see. And I feel like there's still more, more room, too. I mean. To grow? Yeah, absolutely. What do you think? Let, uh, let the breweries that are here now make some money. And then <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> and for then sure. grow. <laughs> yes. Is there much of a beer scene or craft beer scene in Spain? What's how does that? No, oh no, 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 Spain, no, no, <laughs> no. I mean, I'm, there's a few breweries in Madrid and a few breweries in Barcelona. Yeah, but everybody there drinks um, Maun or uh, Maun. That's what everybody drinks. Maun. Is that a Spanish beer? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So everybody. <laughs> it, what is that? What would that be like equivalent to in America? Just like a Blondel. You okay. Know, just like, you know, like your Bud Light. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's Spain, I think, is more like wine mm. drinking yeah. than beer. Do you get back to Spain a lot? I go twice. So I go back for Christmas. My parents are there. Okay. So I'm leaving now in June. And what I do is I go, I see my parents, and I drop my daughter off there. She's there for two months. Amazing. That's awesome. Yes. And then she comes, she flies back. Wow. Yes. That's really cool. I've never been to Spain. Why? <laughs> I've been, I don't know. I've been dying to go to Spain. I've, yeah. It's been on my list for so long. You have to. I, I need to go. I really, really, really <laughs> want to go. I've been to a bunch of other places in Europe, but I've never been to Spain. Okay. But I think when I, the next time I go to Europe, I think I'm going to be there for a long time. Okay. Like, I think I'm going to go maybe one way ticket. And, Bring my guitar and just kind of, you know, play shows, busk around Europe and just be Please there let for, me know when that is. And I, will. I, w I absolutely <laughs> will. Yes. I'm actually, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm hoping, I shouldn't, I can't say I'm trying because I'm not really trying, but I, I learned that I am eligible to get my Polish passport. Oh, okay. Through my through, grandfather. Yes. yes. And so I just, Do and, it. I, and I got the birth certificate. I found it. So I really just need to go to the Polish to the embassy. consulate. Yeah, to the consulate here and just say, do like, it. "Hey, what do I need? Show me how to do this because I need to get my Polish passport because then I can live there." Yes, um, 
if you just go onto their website, yeah, you're gonna be able to do everything and just show up there with all your paperwork. Yeah. And get it. Okay. Yes, do it. Yeah, I know. That's, that's <laughs> do it. <laughs> it's on my it's on my list. Um I love Europe. Do you miss it? I Okay. I don't think there is a better place in the world than Los Angeles. Wow. Um, I have not lived in that many places, right? So mm-hmm. so I might be completely wrong. I feel LA is the only place where you don't even need to travel hmm. to learn so many things from so many cultures, from so many people. Yeah. Like I feel in Los Angeles, you learn something new every day. Yeah, that's true. Every day. That is definitely true. And I, th- when I've been, when I go back and I'm home for like three weeks, I'm like, okay, I'm, this is great. Great yeah. lifestyle, great people, amazing everything. Yeah. But I, and again, I'm sure that if I go to Madrid, or if I go to Barcelona, it'd be a different feeling. Mm-hmm. So maybe because I go to the small town, yeah, um, I I feel that's what's missing. Mm-hmm. But in Europe, in general, I think you miss that cultural diversity that you find in Los Angeles. It is extraordinarily diverse. It is in the LA. best place. Well, I'm sure New York, it's like uh, that too, right? Or, maybe. I mean, I haven't spent as much time in New York. New York is definitely very diverse. Very diverse. But um, L.A., I mean, there's you can go to places in L.A. and feel like you're in Mexico. Like, okay. recently I went to the Alameda Suave. Okay. Down yes. in, like, kind of, like, South Central. And I, I lived in Mexico for a little bit. I lived in Mexico City. Okay. Not too long, but for a bit. And... It brought you back. It totally <laughs> did. Like, the markets... It's very. It felt very reminiscent of markets in in Mexico. This is spring break. This past spring break, my daughter is like, "Let's go somewhere." I'm like, "We don't have the time. Mm-hmm. We don't have the money. I will take you to a different country every day." Oh wow! I took her to Little Tokyo one day. Yeah, we went to Little Ethiopia another day. Where we is went Little to Ethiopia? By the Grove, but like the. Oh. Uh, Fairfax there. Okay, yeah, yeah. We went to Koreatown, mm-hmm. Chinatown. Like, you, LA is rich in every single culture. Wow. I feel. <laughs> That's beautiful perspective. <laughs> I, I think so. I mean, you yeah. have the best of the best here, the best of everything. Mm-hmm. In one city. I need to go to Little Ethiopia. Yeah. <laughs> I've never been. I've been to the Grove. I love the Grove. I mean, by there, just Google it, but it's very close. Yeah. Yeah. I love Little Tokyo, too. I love Little Tokyo. I yeah. love Little Tokyo. And and it feels that you're not on a seat, you know, that you're not in LA for, yeah. for a bit. And What's funny about Little Tokyo, and this is the thing that I feel like people should know about downtown, is, you know, Little Tokyo is part of downtown LA. Yeah, of course. And yet... When you're there, it feels like a completely different world. Little Tokyo. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> yes. It's a different dynamic. It it feels different. It looks different. It smells different. Um, it's kind of nicer. <laughs> it's, it's, it's nicer than the, where, <laughs> where we are right now, which is, you know, the historic district. But that's kind of the funny thing about uh, downtown LA is all these little districts are here are also different. The yes. historic district, the jewelry district, the financial district, South Park, Little Tokyo, the arts district, the fashion district. And you can walk to all of them. And yeah. 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 No, it's that I feel like is is the winner for people who are used to or craving that or wanting that to be able to just be able to walk around. And, yes. And parking is actually not that crazy compared to other major cities. I mean, you go to other major cities, you might be paying 30, 40, 50 bucks to park right where you need to be. Where our brewery is located is free parking on Sundays. There's always yeah. plenty of street parking. And as you said, it's not it's not hard. Yeah. I mean, that's it's... where I parked. I, <laughs> my van is like they are one block the... away from okay. your brewery. Okay. So <laughs> That's how you find the yeah. brewery. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I might even pop in later today. Who knows? Oh, what, what are we your have, hours? We have a singles event today. So we have uh, like oh, over 150 um, people showing up for a single Whoa. event. What's the age range? <laughs> um, so this time, 
the organizer decided not to have an age range. Oh, okay. So because last time we did 24 to 35. It's a good age range. So, no, to, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm today's, right in the middle of that. Today's everybody is welcome. So let's see. And we have a little um, market, like a food market mm -hmm. on the patio. So there's going to be food, beer, singles. So Sweet. <laughs> what time is that at? <laughs> <laughs> so it just starts at 2. So it goes from 2 to 4. Oh, um, no. <laughs> that's right when I'm running the event. That's going to oh, be here. In, yeah, I'm running it like 2 to 6. So. Oh, 2 to 6. But maybe, who knows, After. people will stick around. They've had a few beers. Yes. They want to stay. Yes. And, and somebody said, even if I don't meet my other half, I might make friends. 100%. That's a good perspective to have. Yes. Because in LA, I feel um, it's hard to meet people. It is. You have a girlfriend? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But it, it is like, I don't think it's an easy place to meet the other half. Yeah. It is It is a different, out of all the places I've lived. It's dry. It, it feels different here. To find. For sure. Um, it's so funny too, because there's so many people in this city. And yet, for whatever reason, it's it can be hard to find. To find, yes. To connect with people. Yes. Yes. So when you first came to America, did you move to L.A. <laughs> or did you move to a different city? I moved to L.A. I just didn't have the English that it like, required. <laughs> did you speak any English at all? A little bit because I had lived in London for one year. Okay, but cool. I pretty much hang out with all the Spaniards in London. Yeah. So my English just was not there. Yeah. So I moved here. And then it was so easy to get caught on to the, oh, I don't need to speak English here, right? Mm. Um. And then I'm like, no, 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 I'm here. I need, I need to go to school here. I need my English. Yeah. Um, so I would purposely go out and try to practice with as many people as I could. That's cool. Um, because everybody here was bilingual. It would help me a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and then I met my husband at a bar, at a club. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't speak any Spanish. So that <laughs> helped. <laughs> yeah. That helped a lot. So. Wow. Um, one time, but all the slang and everything is, is, is hard to move to another country. Well, the, sp the span, well, okay. Yeah, for sure. The English and then the English, English slang, but also Spanish here is different than Spanish in Spain. Yes. Yes. So that, what was that like to experience the Spanish here? Well, at least it was the same language. Like at least yeah. they didn't feel like my English was the struggle. Yeah. Um, and I knew the prop, like I knew the grammar and mm -hmm. I knew how to read it and I knew how to write it. Yeah. But then I remember Trevor one time said, hey, let's hang out. Mm -hmm. And I called my friend. I'm like, this guy wants to like hang me or something. <laughs> like, I don't know what he's talking about. And I was really scared. Oh, um, my goodness. So there's a lot of slang that you don't think about that people don't get. That's so funny. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. English is a pretty quirky language. Spanish has some pretty crazy, yeah. um, yes, <laughs> like <Verb. laughs> double, triple, quadruple meanings. Um, my Spanish is not great, but but you're gonna move to Spain, yes, with yep. one way to get, <laughs> <laughs> and then right. we're gonna do a podcast in Spanish. That would be that would be incredible. Over there, that would be really cool. That was, that's what we're gonna do. Yeah, I do want to do a trip through all of South America. Oh my God! Yeah, I never been. That has to be. And so I think if I do that, my Spanish will definitely pick up. Will get better. Find a Spanish girlfriend. A Spanish girlfriend. That's what you need. Um, Sounds good to me. <laughs> that will that will serve both purposes. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I definitely. Well, the reason why I lived in Mexico City was because I I had a girlfriend there. who was in Mexico City. But did she speak English? She did. Oh, okay. She spoke more languages than me. She spoke German, English, oh, okay. Spanish. She was kicking my ass when oh. it came to languages. Um, but I definitely learned a lot of Spanish through that process. Okay. <laughs> I've learned a lot of Spanish being in L.A. Yes. Yes. Too. Is, yes, definitely. That's that one place. thing that I love is I, I have so many opportunities to, to practice. practice. Um, there's oh. definitely been times when I've had to speak only Spanish. To people in LA, there is more bilingual people here than anywhere in the world. I would think, right? I mean, yeah, it's it's pretty like all metropolitan. All the bartenders speak both, no problem, like no accents, nothing. Like mm. everybody speaks both, and it's like yeah. the most common thing. I'm like, okay, yeah. must be nice to be born like that. <laughs> <laughs> For sure, I'm sure your daughter is also bilingual. Yes, yes, of course, yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, 
I feel like that's a really it's powerful gift. powerful experience growing up to be able to spend time in different countries, yes. see different perspectives. Yes. Um, I think I don't think she'll value it until she's older. For sure. But she's have it. She has it. So Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. Do you think that she would move back to Spain, like for college, or is is that kind of a she she is actually a study there for a bit. Uh but she only goes there for vacation, right? Yeah. So vacation life is it's different not the same than real life. <laughs> than real life. Yeah. So I think you idealize your the place. Yeah. And where she goes is like the beach, volleyball, tennis, yeah. party, go out every night. <laughs> and and you know, it's it's a small place so she can she's free. Yeah. So I think she has that in her mind. And here is like, mommy has to drive me. And I, if I want to go to a concert, it's like a, somebody has to take me to the concert. Yeah. Um, whereas there, you just walk or take the train or take the metro. Yeah. Um, so I think, but let's see. She's yeah. 15. Let's see what she does. That's what I ended up doing is I went back to where I was born. I mean, I was born in Canada. And you went back. But I grew up in America. Uh -huh. And then when I was 18, I went back. And what do you think? I think, I mean, I loved it. It was, it was an amazing experience. That's where all my, my family is still back in Canada. Like my aunts and, and uncles and grandparents. And it's Vancouver? Yeah, Vancouver. Wow. And for me, but growing up, I always held on to that identity of being Canadian. And I wasn't American until I was 12. Okay. And so for a while, that, that was all I was, was Canadian. Canadian. You know, and so for me, it was like a really important Process. Part of your identity, of course. But I think if I had stayed in America, I think my life would have been very different. I think that moving back to Canada just gave me a totally different perspective on life, life and the world. But why? Why do you think that was? You know, it's funny. People, I think a lot of people assume that like Canada is pretty similar to America. Um, really? They, that's maybe just where I grew up. Okay. You know, I think that, or maybe I'm just projecting that. I don't know. But there's just so many little differences. Okay. Um, I mean, when you're talking with Canadians, a lot of Canadians are, you know, pretty, like, a lot of Canadians, most Canadians that I've spent time with uh -huh. are very opinionated when it comes to, like, politics regarding <laughs> America. <laughs> Um, you know, I also just grew up in a family where we talked about politics and that stuff all the time. All the time? Yeah. And I love that. I mean, I ended up studying political science in college, but perspectives were different. You know, I grew up in America. I grew up in a very like conservative, really like patriotic really? kind of town. Okay. So going to Canada, it's, you know, the it's opposite. <laughs> the opposite. Obviously they're not you know, gung-ho, patriotic Americans. It's like mellow, chill Canadians who... Things are just different. Healthcare is free. Education is a lot cheaper. Um, people have a different perspective on guns. You know, it's just... there's, And then there's like a lot of little things too, like doing business and opening up a bank account and having a credit card and doing my taxes and voting and all these things, like all those big things as an adult I did first in Canada. In Canada, okay. Before I did them in America. Okay. The first election I voted in was in Canada. In Canada. Not in America. So it's a lot of little things that just, I think, changed well, uh, my perspective. And where do you see yourself? In Canada or in America? I think that... I want to have a family one day, mm -hmm. and I've always thought that when I have a family, I want to have a family in Canada. Okay. Yeah. I just think that- It's easier. It's easier. I think there's more support. Um, I feel like the the social fabric in Canada is just- it's The net is there. Yeah. It makes it easier to, to do things like having a family. Um. Now, that being said, the reason why I'm in America right now okay. is 
so this is how I, I look at it. Canada is this like beautiful, amazing place where life is just, it's easy, but it can get a little boring. And I okay. feel like America is this crazy <laughs> wild west that has like the lowest lows and the highest highs. And so, you know, I'm here for the ride. I'm here in LA for the excitement, the um, chaos. And then and then you want to settle down. And, <laughs> and settle, settle down, down and go back to Canada. And go back to Canada, yeah. So, but also too, I could see myself maybe in a, in a completely different country. Who knows? I, I was going to say, after you've lived in LA, it's going to be hard for you Whatever you go. Yeah, yeah. So I have noticed this effect that when I leave L.A., it will feel like Great. the first day, I'm like, wow, I'm so happy to be out of L.A. Yes. And then that first week, you're still like cruising on that energy. And then another week goes <laughs> by. And then, and then you're starting to be like, okay, I think I'm ready to go back to L.A. And then you're really ready to go back. And you, yes. and you come back to L.A. and you're like, wow. This is I'm this glad. Yep. Glad to be back. It has that effect. Yes. On you. And you will hear the best musicians here. You will. You, we have the best of the best here. Yeah. So, we'll see. We'll see if we'll I can see. ever escape the the <laughs> gravitational pull of L.A. Um, I think I'm gonna be based in L.A. for a long time, though. Okay. You know, like I have the podcast studio here. It's always a plane ticket away. I can always come back, you know. Always. Do podcasts and do my thing and then go out. Go out. So. That's a good plan. Yeah. And it sounds like you you guys are going to be I, in downtown LA for, hopefully. for a long time. <laughs> hopefully. Let's hope that the business goes gets better mm -hmm. and we're going to stay here. Yeah. yeah. What do you think are some of... When, when you're making your business plan, mm -hmm. you have a few different kind of revenue streams. You have, or I guess like opportunities mm -hmm. for revenue. You have your draft beer yes. in the future. You have distribution with cans. Yes. You also have a space. So there's venue. A, a, a venue, events. What would you, how would you prioritize those things in terms of like Money, biggest revenue? Biggest revenue is people in the tap room drinking beer got it that's that's the best that yeah. ties with the event so if i have events i have mm -hmm. people drinking beer in the tap yeah. room um the distribution will help for everything else but yeah. right now i right now i just need people to know we exist that high def is here that we high def brewing is here downtown la <laughs> yes come get some beer <laughs> yes where um, are the cross streets um so i'm all even 12 okay Between 12 and Pico, but on Olive. Easy parking. Very easy parking. <laughs> <laughs> There's four-hour parking right there on Two the street. Two dollars. Yeah, it's so cheap. <laughs> it's so cheap. Two dollars, four hours. Yeah. And then after 8 p.m., it's free. After 8, it's free. Yeah. Free on Sundays. Um, we do Monday. We have like a cornhole league. Um, oh, sweet. A cornhole league. Yes, it's so much fun. That's awesome. The cornhole, it, it restarts because we do seven weeks, so it restarts May 15th. Mm -hmm. Super fun. Tuesdays, we're starting a comedy show. No uh, way. Yes. That's cool. So Who I'm, is running that for you the, guys? The comedy show is called High Note LA. Okay. So they're going to start May 9th. Wow. Um, they're gonna, it's going to be ticketed, so it's um, $10. That's cool. And it starts at 8 p.m. And so... Did they keep their ticket sales and then you guys just... Yes. Yourself? Cool. Yes. Really cool. Yes. Wow. So hopefully it... Uh, because we've been running trivia and that has not worked. Really? Yeah. So hmm. let's hope that comedy works. That's interesting because I feel like trivia and brewery is... In, it, like, it usually goes hand in hand. Yes. I, I just don't... I don't think the neighborhood is like coming out yet or, huh. or doing things yet. Yeah. Or at least not in Top Park. <laughs> yeah. The comedy will probably do really well. Hopefully. Yeah. yeah, but uh, if, if you look at that corridor, like McKellar closed, mm -hmm. and then Modern Times closed. That's crazy. Uh, now First Draft is closing, like it, all in that mm. corridor. So I, I, I think we just need to attract more people to that yeah. part. It's crazy that Modern Times closed. I know. That's They're a huge brewery. They but are. they also probably have, They're aren't they based in San Diego? They are, uh, but they were everywhere. And yeah. They 
I, I think the pandemic hurt both sides businesses, small, yeah, huge, middle, every kind of business. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Do you and your husband like to go out to a lot of other breweries and kind of like see what people are doing and try other beers or? My husband more, I, because we have the 15 year old, she, we bring right. her along yeah. sometimes, uh, but my husband more, my yeah. husband more than, than I do. But, you know, we've traveled and when we've been to Cannes and I mean, France and everywhere, we, we try to go to breweries. Mm-hmm. Wherever we go, we try to go to breweries. Yeah. And then San Diego, we always try to check the breweries there. Yeah. I've yeah. heard that there's a pretty good beer scene in San Diego. Oh, it's huge. Yeah. It's like over 300 breweries. Wow. In San Diego. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder what it is in Portland. Oh, it has to be more than that. Thousand, Portland is, yeah. 2000. Portland is the capital. Yeah, it's... <laughs> it's <laughs> the Mecca, the as you city. said. I like that, the Mecca. The beer city. Let's make LA the Mecca. Yeah. Um, have you ever been to Santa Barbara? Mm-hmm. We were just there. Oh, yeah? Um, I Three Windows, is it? Is that the I don't, one? I don't oh, know. okay. I don't know the beer scene super well. Oh, okay, okay, okay. In Santa Barbara. But there is a brewery in Santa Barbara... That I really like. They do something kind of different. They do like hard kombucha. Oh, okay. Um, but it's it's kind of a similar kind of a similar vibe. Like family, small family business, husband wife. Yeah. Um, they're both artists, and they do a lot of like they do like music and poetry, and they have like a printing press. So they have like a newspaper. Nice. Where they like publish, you know. People's poetry and essays and all sorts of stuff. Oh wow! It's called Wild Works. Okay. Um, but oh my god, I wish. I, but I, I just there. next time you're in Santa Barbara, yes. check it out. Um, but I, I love that that spirit. You know, the, the family <laughs> business, just like having a space that you're pouring your love into and your yes. heart into. And I, I mean, I didn't know what this um, road, this trip was going to take us right yeah. but it's it's a different thing every day uh, but it's the love for what you do that makes the difference yeah and we knew we were never going to be like rich on a, on the business right mm-hmm. but at least if we could make enough money to just enjoy it like that's i think mm. that's the bottom line yeah that's i think a really healthy perspective because oh, yeah. <laughs> in this industry you know, it's it's a passion project. It you, has to. You have to love it. Yes. Because. Yeah. I, hospitality I, is hard. Restaurants are hard. Are hard. Is hard. Yeah. So it's you have to love it for sure. Yeah. So I just yeah. What have been some of your favorite moments, being at high def? <laughs> my regulars mm-hmm. are my passion. <laughs> yeah. I have a couple that met there, and they still keep coming. Wow. I, you know, and they met there. Yeah. So that's my regulars have like make me cry <laughs> a lot. And yeah. They're super supportive and having their parties there, having enjoying looking at people enjoy our beer. Yeah. I think that's the best reward. That's really cool. That's what's about. Yeah. Enjoy a beer. Yeah. That we make, you know. <laughs> that it's it's made by us. I think it's easy to not even think about all the steps that someone had to take just to bring that beer in yes. front of you. You know, it's because we're so used to just go to the grocery store and just get whatever we need and go to a bar no. and get a drink. And what is it coming from, right? Yeah. Who's the whose years. art is in, in that, yeah. in that beer that you're drinking. Yeah. yeah. And I have to give a big shout out to the team. You know, the bartenders are fantastic. Mm. They go above and beyond what's required. Yeah. Yeah. They really make sure everybody that walks in that door feels comfortable. That's awesome. And that are having a good time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's an important role. It's The bartender, huge. you know, that's, that's the personality, the life of the, of the place. Of the space. It's the identity. Yeah. Of the space. Yeah. I mean, people will go because to of places it. because oh, yeah. of the bartender. Yes. Oh. So. That's, that's the industry. <laughs> that's, yeah. 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 That's, it's all, it's all part of it. 
what are you um, what are you looking forward to in the next year with like development with high def? What's I really what's really want to get the van. Like that's my next big thing. Okay. I really want to get a van. I want to get a good sales rep and see my beer everywhere. Like Got I it. really want that. I want to yeah. see high def grow. Like we're there. We need we need this. Yeah. So that'd be cool. So essentially. Like a wrapped van. Yes. High depth. Yes. The Ford then... Transit Connect. Yeah. Nice. Yes. Nice. That, yeah. That's what I want. Um, 2017, 18. I'm looking for one. Yeah. Anybody out there? <laughs> yeah. Um, manifest it. Manifest it. <laughs> and, and wrap it up and get a good sales rep. And yeah. Have Would that beer. sales rep also be delivering like kegs yes. too? Yes. 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 Got it. Yes. Everything. That's cool. So that way we can expand into not only downtown, but you know. Mm -hmm. Long Beach, everywhere. Yeah. Who does your, your sales right now? Is it just so you? So we, yes, it's just me. And then we have um, some di uh, distributor company that they're also small like mm -hmm. us. And so we our beer is also in Bakersfield and Long Beach in places. Wow, no yeah, way. In other places. Um, so that's cool. So they're helping. They're helping. That's yes. really cool. Yeah. So that's what I want. I want to grow. I want to see my beer out there. Yeah. You know? How many so other uh, like pubs and restaurants have your beer? Do you know? Um, yeah. I want to say in total, on and off, because mm. like th they order there and then, you know, we get off and then they call us back. And yeah. But I want to say a, a good 30. Wow. Which is not a lot, but, yeah. you know, like that's, the Velasco uses us sometimes for oh, the concert. That's, that's because cool. Because they're there, so we give I them the, the jockey ball. I love the Velasco. And that's what I'm saying. I want to be in the neighborhood. For sure. The yard house at the, at the uh, live, LA Live. Yeah. They have our beer. That's cool. Uh, fig Fixins did for a while. So all these little places. Yeah. Hmm. So I, I, and then Marriott wants our beer, um, but we have to go through a supplier and it takes a full oh. year to get on that list. Crazy. So the year will be over in November, hopefully by then. Yeah. Well, that's going to cool. be at the Marriott. <laughs> yeah. 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 That'd be awesome. Yeah. Man. Well, I hope you get that rap band pretty soon. I know. I really, <laughs> I really want it. I really, really want the band. So that's my next. Um, as soon as some revenue comes in, that's my next purchase. That's sweet. That's my goal. Yeah. What are your hours of operation throughout okay, the week? So we are only open from like 4 to 10 during the weekdays. Okay. But by we do have the license to open till 2 a.m. It's just that I don't have the business. But let's say I have right, the business, yeah. I can stay open. And then Saturday, Fridays and Saturdays, we stay open till midnight. Okay. And Sundays, I only open 2 to 8. But now that the summer is coming, I think we're going to stay open till 10. Sweet. Yeah. We're only seven-minute walk from the crypto. Okay. So yeah. a lot of people um, do pregame uh, before park. park. Yeah. around there pre-game at our place and then go that's good to know um, and then they come back after so yeah. when we know there is a game we stay open later that's cool but unfortunately Clippers and Kings are gone <laughs> so let's hope for Lakers yeah oh man so if you go to a Lakers um, game please stop by yeah and you guys have TVs we you're, have the TVs and we the have game. the projector yes LAFC fans also because they play at the Bank of California but the Metro stop is right there they can they stop by also yeah after or before the game. Yeah. Cool. So all the fans and anybody just stop by and have a beer. <laughs> yeah. I'm definitely going to keep coming by. Okay. I really like your guys' spot. So. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. Um, what advice would you have for somebody who's trying to, you know, they have this idea. They love, they're like, they love brewing beer. They want to brew beer and they, they dream of having a brewery. <laughs> what advice would you have for somebody like that? What your, when your passion becomes a job, it's not a passion anymore. It's a job. Mm. So just that, <laughs> keep that into account. It does, it's, it's not a hobby anymore. It's a job. Mm -hmm. You need to do it 24 hours a day when you have your own business. So yep. Just keep that in mind. If you want to have a, um, your own business, just know that there is no time off. There is no stop, like nothing. Yeah. So... If you're willing to do that, <laughs> go for <Yeah>. it. <laughs> but if not, looking back, I'm not sure I would redo really it. Yeah. Wow. Really? It's been a lot. <laughs> yeah. It's been a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that's, that's an important, you know, message for people to understand is 
it's not a small and they were um do you, you know yeah. how you tell they tell you if you work hard it'll happen mm -hmm. it's a lie mm. you can work very very hard and still fail mm. and there's nothing wrong with that people need to understand that yeah. you can work very very hard and it doesn't mean that you're gonna make it yeah well i think um maybe it, it's different for breweries but i i remember reading a statistic once about restaurants <laughs> And how many restaurants fail? You know, with people's first restaurants. I think it's like eighty percent or something crazy like that. And and you don't think that those eighty percent are working hard? They're yeah. working very hard. Yeah. And they still fail. So I think yeah. I think people need to realize that that you can work hard and fail and it's okay. Yeah. But the interesting thing was that same statistic said that the people who their first restaurant failed and then they opened another one had a way higher success rate. Okay. So learn, like, they you know, learn, it's, the it's learning hard. experience. Sometimes you curve. learn the hard way. Most of the times you learn the hard way. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think it's incredible that you guys are still, still going. Still going. There's people <laughs> still coming, drinking your beer. Yes. All the years and hard work that you guys have put into putting that on the bar counter for the, for the patrons. Yes. That's incredible. So I hope that, um, for whoever is listening, next time you're downtown LA, come by, have a beer, please, check it out. Please, please, please. Um, do you have any uh, any last things that you want to talk about in terms of high def and your vision and your beer? And um, I think we've covered pretty much everything. Yeah. Um, just consider us for your next event. If yeah, what have, kind of events are you guys so open to? We do we do a lot of happy hours for like if you have a convention center, if you have to go to the convention center for anything, mm -hmm. you have to go to a co concert or if you're bringing your all your employees to downtown, mm -hmm. just stop by. It's a yeah. great place for a happy hour. Yeah. And 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 do some bar hopping like Native Sun is right there, so have a beer with us, have a beer with Native Sun. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's Bar hopping, walking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Walk a little bit more downtown. That's awesome. Yeah. Christina, where can people find um, High Def in terms of like socials, Instagram, website, all so that? So Instagram is High Def Brewing DTLA. Okay. And then uh, the website is High Def .com. Okay. So. What about TikTok? You guys on TikTok yet? <laughs> We're trying. We're trying. <laughs> We're, we do have an account. I'm actually one of the bartenders is nice. running it. Nice. Uh, Micho, who is the funniest person. And, okay. And he's great. He puts a smile on my face every time. That's awesome. So, yes, TikTok. Right we on. need to get better on TikTok. You might have to recruit your uh, your daughter to help you out. I know. I'm sure she is. <laughs> yes. She's probably... <laughs> very that's, savvy that's all <laughs> she does all day long so yes i hope she is savvy <laughs> but oh man well christina thank you so much for thank you coming to hang out and be on the show i'm excited to come back and have a beer with you guys in the future maybe you know do some events or yes something. We'll, yes we can talk offline about that but um yes thank you so much for having me here today yeah, absolutely. Great way to start a Sunday. Yes, 100%. <laughs> Until <laughs> next time. And maybe I'll, maybe I'll swing by tonight. We'll see if there's yeah, any... Yeah, that's single. Any single people <laughs> They are around. waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them I'm on my way. So okay. thank you so much, Christina. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Spring Street Podcast. If you'd like to support the show, sign up for the Patreon to receive exclusive behind-the-scenes content and check out the sponsor links in the description.